Hello, this is Andrew Powell again, here for another demonstration video. In this video, I'm demonstrating, uh, despite all the components on this breadboard, I'm only demonstrating the um, I2C frame breakup board produced by Adafruit. Basically, it's just essentially non-volatile memory, so I can use it for data logging, uh, write information to it, turn off power, and the information still remains even after you know everything gets reset. So. Without wasting any time, let's give the board some power. All the components here get its power from the UC32, and I'll explain a bit more about what these components do later, or rather, what I'm going to do with them later. And I have to go to the console here and start it up. As you can see, you know, it says applications configured during the scheduler. As I mentioned in the last video, I'm using FreeRTOS, so that's what the scheduler is basically. It's running the tasks. And it's uh, right now I have it configured for writing, which is done by using this, uh, I think, a dual state push button. And by pressing it again, it tells us that it's ready to receive input. So now I can say, hello, my friend. And I misspelled friend, but that's okay. I hope everything is all right. So there's a little message, and if I hit enter, you know, that basically confirms that uh, the information is stored on the frame. So now, if I remove the power, remove the power. Uh, the power supply from the UC32 that powers the components goes off, obviously. Thus, the I2C frame has no power. And now, I'm going to make sure this switch is uh, set to the reading mode. And then plug everything back in. So everything's on. Reset the terminal. Uh, set it. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Uh, restart session. So, okay, it's restarted, it's in reading mode. And if I tell it to start, then there's our message that was saved onto the frame. And it's basically it. Over, over on this screen, this is basically some of the code that I wrote to get working. This is actually a bit trickier than I expected. Uh, not because of the I2C frame, that was actually the easy part. After making sure the I2C stuff worked, uh, basically all I needed to do was just follow the datasheet and using these memory type uh, devices through the I2C interface is relatively simple. I mean, all you do is just send the, the slave slash writing slash read bit, then the address, then the data, or then read. It's pretty straightforward. What was challenging here is getting the, the console stuff to work properly. Uh, for whatever for whatever reason, using the PIC32, you have to, uh, like in my case, I had to redefine like two special low-level functions, mun underscore char, I think it's called. There's another one you have to redefine too. And if you don't do that, some of the functions, or most of the functions, I just couldn't get working properly, and especially the, the functions that allow you to uh, write information to the PIC32. But it works now. And I'm satisfied, which means I can move on to the next part of this project, which is getting all these components together working. Uh, unfortunately, using the IR proximity sensor, they all share the same uh, I2C, I2C slave address, which is really unfortunate. You can't change them to be different addresses, so that kind of defeats the whole purpose, in my opinion, since I2C is supposed to allow you to connect multiple components to only two wires. However, uh, there's a little nifty breakup board, a multiplexer, it's like a 1 to 8 multiplexer, allows you to connect multiple I2C devices that share the same slave address all to the same I2C port, which is pretty nifty. And that's what I'm going to work on next. And yeah, that basically concludes this demonstration video. Thank you to those who took the time to watch it. Bye.